Happy Halloween, guys and girls. My God, it's that wonderful time of the year. Not Christmas, that's just right around the corner. It's the Halloween. And I gotta say, I'm not doing much this year. Just passing out candy and watching scary movies. That's pretty much it. And probably some hot wings on the side. So that's gonna be my day. Anyways, this episode of Azure Lane was really rival driven. Like, everyone had their own resolve that they're trying to stay fast on, you know? For instance, um, it wasn't just about the rescue mission, rescuing the two maids who had the black box, but it was also how the other factions were having pretty much how they feel about each other and who they want to take down. Some are here for redemption, some are here to face down someone they want to beat, others are conflicted with their own feelings, emotions all over the place. For instance, Zuya Kaku. Zuya Kaku is completely obsessed with Eagle Union and Enterprise. Like, she's just straight arrow. She's even ignoring other enemies just to go to her but in the end, fails to even see her because it's a diversion. And most of the things in this episode was a diversion for a rescue mission. You know, people were just too focused and they weren't really paying attention to other things, which is a humongous flaw, especially in war, which is going on. And even Enterprise is learning a bit more from Belfast. And Belfast was worried about other two mates. She wanted to go rescue her off while leaving Cleveland to fight very two strong battleships from the Sakura side. So hopefully Cleveland can just dodge things off for now. And I can see the Iron Blood fleet really don't care of their hand in this battle. They don't see it as that important because they really don't know what's going on. The Sovereign Empire is doing their own little thing where they're messing around with the black box from technology from the Sirens. And the Iron Blood fleet probably don't know much about it. So they, they didn't even care if they were really there. They were just there like just for support and they're like, We'll stand here, we'll wait until we are needed. And then if we're not needed or things get too out of hand, we get the hell out of here, man. We pump in the road. And that pretty much what did happen. Because when an Enterprise showed up, like, nope, it's over. Surrender. We're retreating. They didn't even care. It was mostly Soccer Empire who had a bigger stake in this battle, pretty much. It's not just for reputation-wise, but also their battle was a very, very important piece that they really need right now. And of course, um, then there's also the feelings between, of course, Ayanami. She is conflicted. She's doing exactly what I was saying from last episode. On her side, she has everyone she loves in the Sakura Empire. She sees them as friends and family. She, and, and then at the same time, she's thinking people that we're fighting against also have friends and family, people that they care about, you know? They don't want to see anyone to harm. They probably just would rather not go to war. But they have to. Because no matter what happens, war. War never changes. <laughs> Fall out. And with that being said, as, as, as I've always been saying, a lot of people will join a war with no true ambition, but just saying, why am I here? I thought I was just here just to protect my country, not just to attack other people, to force themselves onto them. How is this protecting my country? How is this truly serving my country? What are we getting out of this over a primal black box that only probably won't even benefit me, but probably just to hire up so they can be happy with what they want to do in the end of the day? It's a very strolling conflict, especially when you read some diaries of like soldiers of the past and different wars and stuff. Like they're here, they don't know why they're fighting, they're just doing it because they were told to do it. And Ayanami and Laffy, like I said, Laffy is very wise. I actually did some research on Laffy. You know, I'm doing my time researching each ship girl to understand their backstory. And apparently she was a night ship, and she was taken down by Hiei. But Hiei was taken down, like, the day after or something like that. So very interesting. She was an elite um, ship, despite her being a starter ship, you know. So you know, she's also very popular in the east side of the world. So it's good to know. She, I can see why. She's also my interesting character. She is that lazy kind of character who don't show much emotion, but there's more to her than meets the eye. She seems to be 
the wine is the one who's more straightforward to her feelings compared to Javelin, who is the up and bubbly one, but she's not that true to her feelings. She's conflicted herself, where she doesn't want to fight Ayanami, but doesn't know what to do with it, where compared to Ch Laffy, where it's like, hey, I'm not going to fight you. We did this last time. I just sat there and we relaxed. I'm going to do it again. We're not going to fight each other. And even though Ayanami had her, you know, she thought she had her convention saying, I don't hate fighting, but I don't like it neither. And she believes she just has to fight for the people that she's loving with. But in the, the day, the convention wasn't strong enough. She's still hesitating. The question is, will she hesitate if it was someone else? It was someone from, I don't know, the Navy fleet or someone else from Eagle Union. Would she hesitate to fight them? Who can say until that's happened? Because every time she's on the battlefield, most of the times she is fighting those two, or trying to fight those two, but she can't find her resolve to do so. So she's made a club crossroads where she has decided what she wants to do at the end of the day, and has made that decision. And even if the shit she makes, she's going to lose something. That's just how it is in life. No matter what you choose, you are bound to lose something. You can't have it all. If you do, there's something very fishy about that. Well, anyways, I digress with that. Now, the episode was very high tension stakes, but I like it's, it's, it's like this. I said this before. When when K Tom collection was in high tension stakes was going on, things felt like oh my god, it's like like something bad could happen here. You could feel it. You could sense it. You know when you watch them. You know they're they're on edge. Here, they have it, but then later on, they'll show off something goofy or silly happening. It's like, well, the tension's gone. I, I don't feel like I'm on edge no more. You just killed the vibe. You just killed the mood of the show. So, the question is, is I asked the show, what are you trying to gun here when it comes to atmosphere? This is what I want to know. Is what are you trying to cut here for atmosphere? Are you wanting to stay tension, but yet don't take it seriously or something? Because I don't know how that's possible, you know? I think you would want your viewers to feel at least a bit more pulled in when you see a situation with their favorite characters going on. Because, you know, when you were pulled to feel someone's in danger, but you see them acting all goofy, they're like, they're okay. And then it kills the entire vibe. And I don't like that. I really don't. So the show needs to find out what it wants to do when it comes to certain situations. It's, it's the exact same thing fairy tale happens has a lot in it, where there's a serious situation going on, but then for some reason, fan service out of nowhere, and we know you're trying to have a very serious moments, but yet, Hero Mashima likes to put that fan service in there, I don't mind fan service, but you gotta put it in at the right time and places in order for you to really enjoy it. If you're putting it inside a very serious moment, you're like, okay, cool, but, but why? <laughs> but why? And this one has a lot of penny shots, especially from Cleveland in this episode. Yeah, I think I like Cleveland. Like I said, Cleveland reminds me a lot of that girl that goes poi a lot on K-Don Collection. You know, she was one of my favorites too. And on all around, it was an okay episode. Um, it had a very weak beginning because of the the conflict of the atmosphere. They wanted the tension to be. I don't know what they're trying to aim for, but the second part was. Very good, you know, everyone was just doing what they had to do, fight, conflict, struggles, hesitation, all that stuff. It was okay. Other than that, so I say this episode was not bad. It was very decent, you know. But anyways, I need something to kick my vibe up. So I'm going to watch some scary movies after this because I'm probably going to watch Candyman after this. Yeah, watch some Candyman. <laughs> but anyways, if you enjoy Azure Lane in my content, help out the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit the bell icon. This has been Macron on Anime, signing out.